Hey everyone, Merry Christmas and welcome to Slow City Church at Home. We're so glad you joined us today. No matter where you're watching from or who you're watching with, we're glad you're here. We've designed this to be a meaningful and worshipful experience, a chance to reflect on the Christmas story, a story that says there is good news of great joy for all people. It says there is hope for everyone. So we're glad you're here and we hope you enjoy the service. shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But an angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. So 
suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace and goodwill towards men. God, we come to you humbly in awe of who you are and how deeply you love us. God, at the end of a year that has been centered around fear, sickness, doubts, and disappointments, centered around broken hearts and broken dreams and broken relationships, overwork, lack of work, exhaustion, being overwhelmed and weary. God, in a time when we feel like we have every excuse to be down, like everything's been taken away. God, would you shift our focus to you, Lord, that we would be centered on you. Focus our hearts, our minds, our eyes, our ears on you, the God who overcomes all things, the God who breaks strongholds, who heals, who comforts. Father, Son, Maker, Creator, Savior, Prince of Peace, King Jesus. Would you focus our hearts on you tonight? We love you, Jesus. Amen.
it's all about you yes it's all about you from my heart to the heavens jesus be the sins it's all about you yes it's all about you all hail king jesus Hey everybody and welcome to Christmas Eve with Slow City Church at home. It is so good to be with you here tonight um, on Christmas Eve. I don't know about you, but this night every year makes me stop, uh, makes me take a breath and reflect and remember. I remember as a little boy how much I looked, how much I looked forward to this day. As a family, we'd get together um, at my grandparents' house, and we'd eat, and we'd laugh, and we'd listen to stories. We'd pack into this tiny living room, and we would look forward to the moment that we'd open one gift. After we opened those gifts, we'd light a candle, and we'd sing Silent Night together as a family. We'd help everybody clean up the dishes and pack everything back up. My mom would put my coat um, back on me, and we'd walk out the front door. And I remember every Christmas Eve, my dad would always say, guys, look up. Maybe you'll get a glimpse of Santa's sleigh. Guys, look up. Maybe you'll see the Christmas star. And I remember as this little boy, I was filled with wonder, with expectation, with this hope that maybe I would get a glimpse of something wonderful, of something amazing, of something improbable. Look up. This, uh, this Christmas, um, driving around San Luis Obispo, I get to see that same expectancy. I get to see that same glimmer of hope in my kids' eyes when we're driving around town and my wife and I say, guys, can you spot the tree? Can you spot the Christmas tree on top of Madonna? Look up and see if you can see it. You see their eyes open wide and wonder as they look up. There's something different and unique and wonderful about Christmas, isn't there? Everyone everywhere looks to Christmas. We're spending money, we're decorating houses, we're, we're tearing down trees from the forest and we're putting them in our living rooms. There's Christmas movies. What's your favorite? It's a Wonderful Life, Home Alone 1, 2, Home Alone 2, Sneaky, sorry, sneaky Good, um, Christmas Vacation, Jingle All the Way. What's your favorite Christmas movie? We're doing all of these things. There's gingerbread and mistletoe and eggnog, and there's this spirit of sharing, of giving, of considering others. There is something hope-filled about Christmas. And right now, all around the world, there are people gathered together singing songs and telling the story of a God who gives, who loves, who cares, telling the story of a God who sees and who has come to be with us. A God who sends his son, a savior, a king to us and for us for peace. A God who gives this life-changing gift. 
See, there's something about a gift that makes love visible, isn't there? Even those who don't believe the story look to Christmas, this time of year, and, and want in on the goodness, the wonder, and the possibility. Why? Because Christmas is about the impossible becoming possible. It promises this change of a different ending. It calls us to look to hope. And everyone everywhere is desperate for hope. But can I ask you, maybe, maybe you find yourself tonight a little reflective, a little nostalgic, remembering Christmases gone by. This Christmas might look a little bit different for you. But have you found yourself this year a little tired, a little weary, a little exhausted, Maybe you're like me and you've grown some bags under your eyes. Have you felt this year becoming a little hopeless? Have you found yourself stuck in a cycle of letdowns and unmet expectations? I mean, we've all experienced 2020. 2020 has happened to you and to me. And we've all experienced the pain and the loss and the frustration of a global pandemic political madness, racial injustice, and just this steady stream of disappointments. Have you felt that? Have you felt the weight of this year? Maybe for you, your business has struggled. Maybe the stress has affected your marriage, your kids, your schoolwork, your friendships. Maybe it's affected the way you, you view yourself and you've really just been battling this self-worth. Maybe the anxiety of this year has just overwhelmed you and the depression has just zapped your strength. Maybe fear has gripped you and the letdowns and the disappointments have left you feeling disheartened. I don't know about you, but I look to Christmas and think maybe this Christmas will be merry and bright. Maybe it will be, be full of life and light and hope and peace and joy. But have you found yourself a little tired, a little weary, a little exhausted? We can't do what we've always been able to do. We can't gather the way we've always been able to gather. We can't experience those same traditions. Can I ask you a minimally invasive question? Have you found yourself this year a little bit more distracted than usual? We've been locked up in our homes and lock, lock, lockdowns and letdowns and, and all of these things, and it, it can lead us to be distracted. You can fill our time with things just to take our mind off of reality. Have you found yourself there? Have you found yourself maybe a little bit more discouraged? Have you found yourself a little afraid? And maybe we wouldn't like to admit that we've been afraid, but maybe in our subconscious, we've just been a little anxious and afraid of the unknown. We don't know what's around the corner. Me too. I've been there with you. I think we've all experienced this lockdown, this letdown, and this state of looking down, where our eyes and our hearts and our souls are a little downcast. Have you been there with me? A month or so ago, um, I was there. <laughs> I was there. Uh, I had become overly busy. I had become consumed with worry and anxiety over some unknowns ahead in, in my life. And one day I came home from the office and I barged through the door and I threw my keys down on the, on the counter and I plopped down on the couch. And, and I just wanted to escape a little bit. So I pulled out my cell phone and I'm, and I'm scrolling Instagram and I'm checking ESPN and I'm reading the news and I just want to get out of my own head and, and escape to something. I'm just looking down at my phone and my little girl, I'll never forget this. She walks up to me, she puts her hands on my cheeks and she says, Daddy, will you look up? Daddy, will you look up? I want to see your eyes. Look up. Where are your eyes this Christmas Eve? 2,000 years ago, the nation of Israel was in this place of weight and heaviness and downtroddenness, disheartedness, disconnectedness, and they were just downcast. 
They were marked by disappointment and discouragement. The people were exhausted. Taxes were ridiculous. Poverty and anxiety were the norm, and there was division. People were angry. People were afraid, and there was this oppressive government in control. They had been waiting They had been hoping their life was a grind and they were just wishing that God might do something, that God just might break through. See, they had been expecting a Messiah, a Savior for years and years and years, a Savior, a King that would put everything back together only to see hope come and go only to see movements rise and fall, protests and political personalities flame out. And the people were tired, they were weary, they were afraid like you and me. And then, in the middle of the darkest night, God shows up in an unexpected way, in an unexpected town, to an unexpected young girl named Mary. Mary is there. And an angel appears before her and she falls back. She covers her face. She is terrified. Her room fills with light. And there is this figure, this messenger, this angel standing before her. And she's troubled. And the angel says to her, Oh Mary, oh daughter, you have found favor with God. Would you look up? Do not be afraid. I've got good news for you, Mary. You're going to have a child and your child, your son, will be called Son of the Most High and he will reign as king in this forever kingdom. Look up, Mary. Look up. Do not be afraid. See, God shows up to Joseph Mary was, uh, Mary was engaged to, to Joseph. Joseph was her fiance, and, and he, he receives news that Mary's pregnant, and it's not his, and he was hit by this wave of disappointment and letdowns. You're telling me, Mary, that you're with a child, and, and we've never... No. He leaves, and he's disappointed, and he's discouraged, and he's about to end the relationship. And God shows up in an unexpected way. Joseph has this dream This messenger shows up to Joseph in a dream and he says, look up, Joseph. Do not be afraid. Look up, Joseph. Joseph, Don't fear. Mary isn't crazy. (laughs) Take her as your wife. Name the baby Jesus. He will be a savior for all the people. He'll save all people from their sins. Look up, Joseph. Don't fear. Hope is coming. He runs back to Mary. He takes her as his wife. And together they face scrutiny, they face whispers, they face all of these things. But God has pierced through the night and has hope for them. Look up, don't fear, hope is coming. See, the months roll by and Mary, her body is changing and the baby inside of her is growing. And in her ninth month, they've got the room ready. They've got everything set and everything. everybody went to Target and like ran through all the lists. And they've got everything set and ready to go for this son of theirs. And the government did what the government does. They send him a letter and they demand something from him. Their demand, they demand Joseph and Mary to take this 65-mile journey on foot. There are no cars from their hometown of Nazareth to Bethlehem. They make this trek and it's exhausting. It is laborious. And, and, and the time for the baby to come arrives. They're searching desperately for a place that would take them in. See, they have family in Bethlehem, but, but their family had shut them out. Every door was slammed in their face. And this unexpected couple with this unexpected news is unexpectedly without a place to give birth to a child. Finally, they they find this cave around the side of a hill and they nestle in there. And there, with no fanfare or family, the baby Jesus was born. Right there, they sat together, shocked in awe, and they look upon their son and they wondered, is this God with us? Is God with us? 
it's dark here, it is cold here, we're alone here, it is uncomfortable, we are afraid here. And quietly, Joseph reminds Mary, and Mary reminds Joseph of the word that God had promised to them, the words that God had said, Emmanuel, God with us, could it be? That very night, out in the fields nearby, there were shepherds. They were keeping watch over their sheep. Now, these shepherds were not old men with beards. If that's what your nativity scene looks like, I give you permission um, to, to remove those older men and replace them with orphaned young boys. See, shepherds in this time um, were usually really young, and they were usually really young because Rome had come in and their oppressive ways, and they were crucifying anyone who stepped in their way. Shepherds were known as rough and tumble and would often push back against oppression. And these orphaned young boys experienced their dads, their, their, their families being killed. So they did what they knew to do. They, they lived in the fields and they watched sheep. This was a no, this was a dead end life. This was a dead end job, but it was, it, it put food on the table. They were homeless, they were hopeless, and they did what they could to survive. And they lived in these fields. Can you sense the weight of the nation that Mary and Joseph and these shepherds are in? Can you sense the, 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 the hopelessness that these shepherd boys must have felt? They were tired, they were weary, they were discouraged, they were afraid, and their eyes carried the weight of it. Their eyes were downcast. And then the unexpected happened. Into the night, God shows up with an announcement to these shepherd orphaned boys with no hope, no future, no family, no home, he, an announcement is made that would flip the world upside down. Look at Luke 2, 8 through 14. It says, Now there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them. And the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were terrified. They were afraid, but the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause you great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a savior has been born to you. He is the expected one. He is the Messiah. He is the Lord. And this is going to be a sign to you. You'll find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of heavenly hosts appear with an angel praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace to those with whom his favor rests. In the middle of these orphaned boys, these shepherd boys, in the middle of their discouragement, in the middle of their fear, a light shine, shines all around them and they, they are terrified. And they look up. What's the first word that was spoken to them? Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. I have good news of great joy for all people. Today, a Savior is born. They like pull their stuff together and they run into town and they are listening for the cries of a child. And to their shock, down that road, behind that hill, tucked into this hillside, they find a newborn baby and two young parents in a state of shock, in a state of confusion, in a state of wonder. They begin to explain all that they had just seen, the angels like that pierced through the night, like the announcement, what they had just said, and what was spoken to them, they found out in Bethlehem. See, God's light in this moment unexpectedly lights up the darkness with this thrill, this spark, this feeling of hope. And together, they look up. Mary, Joseph, and a weary group of shepherds rejoice. These shepherd boys dance their way back to the hill hillside. They are, they are back to the fields. They are singing praises to God because for the first time in a long time, their eyes went from downcast to looking up. They heard the most powerful announcement from heaven, which was this, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. A Savior has been born. Now more than ever, you and I need to hear that announcement. 
look up. Do not be afraid. In a time and place where you and I and this culture is driven by fear, driven to fear, and we are often alone and we are often afraid, we can see and hear the good news that the shepherds heard that night, the great joy that they experienced that night. They lifted their eyes and they saw hope and you and I can too. See, God made his way that Christmas night to speak directly to them in the middle of their discouragement, in the middle of their heaviness, in the middle of their pain. And he announced, look up, do not be afraid. I have good news for you of great joy for every person. He has good news for you today because a savior, his name is Jesus, King Jesus has been given to us I love what John says in his first chapter. He says, Jesus is life. And that life was the light of all mankind. And that light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not and will not overcome it. See, today, this Christmas and every day, the good news of great joy for all people is that the light has come and there is hope for everyone because Jesus is born. Jesus, who steps into our circumstance and proclaims good news to the poor and to the orphan. Jesus, who speaks light and life to all those who are tired and weary. He speaks good news to those stuck in a cycle of letdowns. He speaks to the divided. He speaks to the divorced. He speaks to the depressed. And he offers rest for our souls, worth for our souls. See, although life seems dark and this year seems never ending, he is a thrill of hope. And a weary world can rejoice and your soul can know that it has worth and value to God because Jesus has come as a gift and that gift displays God's love that he is for you and not against you. That gift, the gift of Jesus, removes our sin and our stain and all stigma. He forgives and leads and guides, and he has been born so that you and I can know him. There is hope in Christmas. There is hope for everyone this Christmas. There is hope for you and me this Christmas Eve. Maybe tonight, for the first time in a long time, you get a glimpse of Jesus You hear that message from heaven of don't be afraid. There's good news of great joy for you. There's hope for everyone this Christmas. Maybe tonight, for the first time in a long time, you look up and wonder at the wonderful counselor, the prince of peace, a savior of the world who cares for you, who loves you, who knows your name, who is with you and for you. Emmanuel, God with us. May we look up and wonder and hope and see Jesus. Merry Christmas. Look up. See the glow of a star a million miles away. So far away. So distant, so weary. Isolated, divided, tired. Months of waiting, months of longing, looking for an answer, looking for hope. When the light has faded and our anxiety has grown, you can still hear it. Don't be afraid. a child is born, to us a son is given. He is called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, Emmanuel. He is the path in a world that's lost its way. He is the thrill of hope to this down, this heart He is the light that even darkness bows to. He is what our weary hearts have longed for. He is the sound of hope, conquering all our fear. He is God with us.
Thank you so much for joining us today. We want to let you know that we meet every week outdoors at 1030 a.m. at Laurel Creek. That's 1150 Laurel Lane. We would love to see you. You're welcome anytime. Thank you again so much for joining us and have a Merry Christmas. Mm -hmm.